soul family welcome to the matrix oracle my name is audrey i am your host for this solar eclipse and new moon in aries april 8th 2024 so big event a lot of people are even traveling to actually be able to witness this solar eclipse and we are here present to listen and receive to what type of new doorways, cycle, portal we are opening for ourselves. If you're new to the channel, please remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow, but also know that I love to invite you to look at those messages and readings according to your personal chart. Yes, it activates you in deeper ways. So for the moon, you're actually activating the back of your third eye. So really opening up gateways of visions. So you are being called here to watch this reading according to your natal moon placement. And I like to do this according to elements. We're going to start with fire because it's a solar eclipse in the sign of Aries. And then we're going to move to the next element, which is earth and then air and then water. Okay, so if you want, you can listen to the fire element as it's also going to be the collective energy message. And look into the timestamps for your personal placement. Let's do it. My dear fire moons or just the collective readings because it is for the collective as well. Let's shuffle the cards and see what we have. So we have the night goddess here. I want it to come forward. What type of new phase are we starting? Because this is a new moon, okay? There's a lot that has been eclipsed. A lot of us have to review and uh, make some shifts, do some cleansing to create more space. So let's see what we have. Okay, one card. Okay. <laughs> And two cards on the side. Interesting setting. We'll start reading like this. Let's see at the center. So when things fall like this with three cards, I usually, I've always worked with um, the chemistry of the feminine and the masculine. And that would be how the two merge. And that's right here because I'm facing my right side. That's going to be the masculine and that's going to be the feminine. So we have, whoa, <laughs> the ace of pentacles, something is being born between feminine and masculine. This is something I've seen even doing uh, my special equinox uh, promotion for the lunar and the solar eclipse. Some of you have got really received some amazing messages of transformation and a rebirth of something coming from the merge of feminine and masculine. That means using your intuition, your heart, to guide you and give you access to the vision. It's almost like setting goals in a new way. That's what I'm seeing here for you. Some of you, if you're still interested in getting uh, your solar eclipse reading, I still have some openings available. In the description let's see what we have for the masculine wow the emperor now this emperor is no I, I'm, I'm i understand now why i have this deck of tarot because when i receive this personally and i do it for myself i know that i have to look at my constellation i have to work with the stars i have to align myself with the stars so there's something okay look at this this emperor has Endlers. This is a symbology of receptivity, of telepathy. You're receiving. Is that an earth? It looks a little bit like an earth. I don't think it is. It's some kind of crystal, but it really felt like Gaia. Some of you, with this fire placement for your moon, or just collectively, we're just receiving some very strong waves of downloads of certain knowledge, certain things that the dog just made me feel um, loyalty, some type of soul's oath, something that is really dear to our soul for us to accomplish in the physical realm. 
that was meant to be activated with this solar eclipse. So there is a gift. There is an opening. We know this, that there's this new phase. We, we can feel it. But what I'm feeling is that for some of you, connecting through meditation, some of you also, if you know a little bit about astrology, looking at what's going on in this activation, how it's triggering some of the placements. Some of you I've seen like you're getting really strong activation in your south node. So you're calling back past lifetime skills. This is something you want to know because you're, you're receptive to it, but it's also something that is written, that is faded. So I love this energy, something faded with this solar um, eclipse is happening. And that's an opening for 28 days, 28 days where we have higher receptivity telepathically to the cosmos to receive some type of gift that is working with the feminine. We have here, wow, the death. We have a rebirth. Didn't I just say that about, I think I intuitively just spoke all of those cards. There's a rebirth, a rebirth from, I, what I'm feeling is like, it's a version of you that you haven't yet experienced because it's a version of you that is detached from those cords that used to, I, I'm hearing boggle you down. You haven't been able to experience this gift or this layer of, I'm hearing the word ecstasy, joy, bliss, contentment, fulfillment, because you had to experience some contrast, but this is what is really exciting. And the feminine here is playing a big role, especially with the little black cat here. If you ever dream about a black cat, this is your intuition trying to speak to you, your feminine, your dark feminine, something that is unseen. That was very much present in the April messages, by the way, you guys, if you haven't watched this, go and check it out. You should have maybe like here a link for the April messages. The feminine is rising, but she's rising in very, very different ways, in ways that really show that you her, all of us have let go of certain constraints. So let's see what this Viking deck might want to share with us. Okay, all right. Agalaz. Oh, this is definitely about change and, 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 and bringing a new. Let me see here. We're going to look at the little booklet for this one. Agalaz. Okay. So this is about a certain difficulty and major changes and hardship that you had to overcome. It's telling you also not to be distracted by drama. It's a rune that means hailstone. So there was something that had to be destroyed, okay? And you see the sword. There was, and I'm not surprised, you guys, because eclipse season is really about creating space for a version of you that was not able to move through and there's going to be realization with the solar eclipse of maybe some of the cores that were holding you back. So there's going to be a strong uh, alliance for you to work with your feminine. And that means destructuring, destructuring the old. Because again, we spoke about this. There are some of you watching this. There are getting strong activation in your chart while this is occurring. All right, let's get some deeper messages about this, this structuring. Because we're opening a new phase. 
But this new face is a version of you that has not yet been revealed. Okay, there's a fourth one here. And they came in this order. The Nine of Swords. Some of you, there was some type of mind program. There was some type of mind program that kept this gift dormant. Okay, almost like a, a certain frequency you were on, a certain belief. See, I'm being called to put it under the emperor. Almost, I feel here a little bit like um, Sleeping Beauty. Some of you were just still under a certain, well, let's spell, certain like pattern that just kept you unaware of, of something that was not allowing you to shine in this way, in this fashion. Let's see the other cards. Four of Pentacles. Look at this. I do feel that there could have been some type of fear. Some type of fear to feel a certain way or certain thing, reminiscence about something. But when you do, and this is what the solar eclipse is actually allowing you for this new phase is that when you let yourself feel again those patterns there's something it's almost like this time you know if like a program goes through a certain circuit okay this time with the event of the solar eclipse there's something that's going to be short-circuited, that's going to force you to look and feel at a certain pattern of yours. It feels, it feels that it's something that is emotional, but that became a mental way of thinking, okay? And when this event occurs, you're going to be able to see the gold and the preciousness of, of it all. All right, let's see what we have. Oh, we have three. Wow. Ace of Cups here in the middle. So let me just move this so you can see it all. Up. I love, love this energy because it feels like you're seeing how this is in the constellation. This is in the stars. This is something faded, okay? And something with the pentagram here um, that required a certain knowledge of alchemy. And what I mean by alchemy, some of you, how to shift a way to relate to certain events. Some of you, you might actually work with alchemy. But there is an alchemical process through the, again, you're going through the same loop and there the solar eclipse happens. And it's creating this agalas, this hailstorm. Oh, you guys, oh my God. I just remember, I have, my boyfriend actually took a video of it because he was not believing it. We had here in California a few days ago, two, three days ago, a hailstorm. And it was so improbable. It's, it's not a time of the year where you would expect this here. But you see, this is almost like the type of synchronicity and magic that you're going to witness where certain things that you're thinking of and certain things that you're going to review are going to literally show themselves in your materialized world. Look at this. There's going to be an abundance of synchronicity, of signs that are going to show you the way. The way, it's a new way. It's a new path. It's a new portal. It's a place you haven't ventured in. At a soul level, everything is timeless. But with this entity that you are in right now, this physical body, 
you haven't experienced that frequency. And what is this? Okay, so first we have the Eight of Cups, because obviously there is something here to remove. Oh, double Eight. Okay, some of you, I know it's, it's a, a little particular, but I want to share this with you. Some of you, you were born in 1988, and this is, if that's you, please look at your chart. There's something going on, okay? I don't know why I'm saying this, but some of you um, are watching this. If you're 1988, there's something really strong happening. There is, <clears throat> yeah, it's almost like a, okay, with the throat, <clears throat> This is Mercury retrograde. Some of you, if you are wanting to connect more to how the astrology is influencing you and what messages and what energy work you can do, please subscribe to the level up for the astrology or even to the music because you'll get some of the readings for the planets. I do have a special uh, Mercury in retrograde in Aries. Okay, that's going to be pretty much the whole time in April there's a connection with how you spoke maybe some of you you were doubting the synchronicities you were doubting what you were seeing no this is not real this is not possible something about possibilities there's an opening here with more communication with this double eight this feels very much connected. You know, when I'm seeing double eight, I'm seeing the tarot card with the strength that has the infinity above the head. And that means that some of you, you had to almost like have this battle with a part of yourself. Maybe there was an event. Maybe there was an event that happened maybe as a child, as a teen, as a young adult, where you heard words that made you feel doubtful about your own abilities. And it could have been something that you didn't see it as a big thing at the time, but it stayed with you. And this is where I feel the removal, the destructuring. There was something you believed that was imprinted in you that rehearsed this pattern and that was keeping you from accessing this new phase. There's a lot of abundance that is coming here in many forms. Abundance is not just money. Money is a tool, okay? So I feel as some of you, if you have a purpose for this money, if you have certain visions that requires money, this is a perfect alignment. You know, Aries, this archetype is about creation. It's about planning the grid work, the playground for your creation. So it also needs to know about boundaries and gatekeeping, because I feel as some of you, this is what your mind had to overcome. But with this solar eclipse, this is the moment that change, that shifts something big because it's bringing hell it's bringing the structuring it's showing you maybe how cold that statement or that way of thinking was towards yourself and look at this you have two aces i would say here uh my fire moons and especially also for the collective double ones okay so elevens and double eights and some of you if you <laughs> If you see, ooh, I feel I felt like shifting things around. If you feel, um, if you witness hell, okay, that that is a confirmation, and I want you to start really believing in the synchronicity of those type of messages and how they can synchronize with some of the nudges that you have from your feminine to move through life. There's some act of faith here, and I feel this is what that new portal is, is walking in a, a space where you're being led by your heart, and your heart is connected to your soul and the vibration of the earth in terms of frequency. 
It's called a perfect fifth. There's something in music that we know very well because it creates hits. It creates hit song, and it's called the perfect fifth. And that means that some of you, especially with the four of pentacles, there was something that wounded your heart, that created a pattern, and that with the solar eclipse, it's bringing hell on it. It's really showing you how untrue it was, what it may have created, and what you're able to step out of and remove this there's a removal of those waters okay so let's see what we can get for you as far as frequency healing i would suggest if you're just very intuitive you can also work just with the moon frequency you'll have it connected either here or down below um and just chant the mantra if you're comfortable with the mantra or if you're not, you can also chant just the OM because it connects you to your um, third eye. Or you can just listen if you're not comfortable with chanting. Let's see what we have for you, my dear. So collectively and especially for fire moons. Okay. <laughs> yes. You know, it's funny because I knew that with this and i was going to say something and i was like no audrey you're going to pull the cards so we know for sure but I, when i said there's some big removal of in the water okay this this brings up to a nine this is wisdom this is a the end of a cycle you know in numerology nine um this made me think of the structured water because there are certain things that you use to feel as soon as you felt it it started this this program okay and then you're being literally divinely intervene here with removing this so removing addiction is part of the quantum fascia healing i don't know why i forgot this healing playlist okay um you can work with the first one this is the first one and one thing that you can do something that I like to do. I do have mantras on this frequency. You can listen to the moon and chant those, um, those mantras if you want to try that out, okay? There's many ways to work with this. You can also just listen to it at night and do nothing, okay? Uh, my music is meant to work whether you're active, non-active. This is really deep sound engineering, so it will give you results no matter what. So there is a removal of at a quantum fascia. That means you're going to unlock a way of moving through life because fascia literally can make you stiff. You're going to be able to move through life in a way that's going to be... It's going to make you feel so much freedom, but not just like freedom... Uh, like we see like freedom it's just uh, on so many levels of freedom maybe some of you you felt restricted by uh how people perceived you how you uh related to others or or how you thought you could venture in that direction that direction this is going to give you freedom remember there was something about what's possible be ready for the i am possible the impossible to open up with this solar eclipse and that's going to require some energy work so as you're watching this a little bit ahead of time make sure that you attune to the moon you can play the quantum fascia healing playlist or just work with the removing addictions that's what i have for you my dear viewers thank you so much for being part of this journey with me and if you need personal guidance you can contact me with the description below you'll have all details there Namaste. If you were born under a moon with an earth placement, so moon in Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, those messages are for you for this solar eclipse in the sign of Aries. I do suggest watching the fire elements because it will give you an extra additional message about what we're experiencing collectively, and it is big. I'm loving this for everyone. So let's start shuffling and see what we have in particular if your moon is in an earth placement. 
there were some messages for some of you um, in the Mercury retrograde in Aries. Not surprising. This is um, a solar event in new moon in Aries. But I felt it right away in my throat that for you, my dear Earth moons, um, the way you speak of your reality is going to be where you want to shift it. So really more of the speaking of your reality. Uh, I do have some readings for all the planets transits for all my YouTube members for the level up. Okay, if that's something that interests you, you can have the details in the description box below. Okay, all right, so we got two cards. The Queen of Wands. Okay. Oh my God. And the freedom. Okay, that really resonates with the collective message. That's how I ended having a whole speech about freedom. <laughs> so definitely go and check that out. Um, but with the Queen of Wands, I feel that for you, my dear Earth Moon, there were certain things that you may have not allowed yourself to experience you see how she almost feels like she's smelling this beautiful i think it's a sunflower of the sorts what's interesting when i said with the sunflower i thought about how the sunflower naturally follows the sun follows the cycle so there's something here that this lunar or sorry solar eclipse so some of you i just said lunar maybe okay there's a moon some of you something obviously with the eclipse season it started strongly but especially with a moon in an earth placement you being attuned to these cycles and how everything evolves in nature seems to be highly relevant for you to know how to move with more freedom, having more freedom in your actions, feeling more uh, content with what is and what will be. Because there's a knowing in the now of what can be because of the, the energy you're embodying. Mm. Some of you, if you want to benefit from my special Equinox promotion where I offer the lunar and solar eclipse readings, I still have some up openings at the time. So that's something you can check out down below. Let's see what we have. So in the setting, we were looking at the chemistry of feminine and masculine so your intuition and your mind right now are showing great freedom to act and behave i feel some of you it's almost like behave the words you're going to speak are going to be different what no you can't and it fell on the feminine i can't i can't show you that card i mean i can of course i can same double queen that fire moon, because it's a solar eclipse, is going to give you some type of, of, of energy, really strong access to an energy that was untapped. And I would say here, because this one has the dragon, I did have a dragon uh, activation reading. So some of you, that might be something that you want to consider as well. The dragon is the ascended master version of us stepping out from the reptilian mind, which is the survival mode. There is something here where you're seeing that you're stepping out of the survival mode and you're feminine. This is so interesting, those flowers, just so much. I feel that for you, there's a release, especially in the womb. There's something that needed to be freed. Maybe some type of guilt, some type of shame, some, some type of event, some type of trauma, uh, especially with this earth placement. The two of cups. Okay, some of you, it was also how there could have been a relationship that 
played a role and it can be in the positive or the negative. You'll know how to relate. This is a collective reading. So what I'm seeing is that there was some contrast that you had ex to experience in terms of creation. Aries, because this is the solar moon in Aries, a solar eclipse, <laughs> and the new moon in Aries, um, is about creation. It's teaching us as an archetype how to learn the, the ground for our creation and how much we can extend it with having proper boundaries, but boundaries that are mindful of others. So it is a gatekeeper and it is a grid worker. It helps you to know also. It's planting the seeds. Like if you're starting to plant some intentions, it's going to almost plant those seeds in your garden as a little trail. I'm feeling Ansel and Gretel type of energy, which is interesting because it's also brother and sister. Some of you, maybe there was something about uh, a wound connected to siblings. If that's the case, I, I'm feeling and that's not going to resonate for everyone. Watch your Chiron placement. I'm seeing someone with a Chiron placement in their third house. Okay. And that could have been something that you're working through. And as an advice, I would suggest checking out my karmic astrology playlist for the Chiron wounded healer and look at your zodiac placement for Chiron and listen to that frequency. Okay. That can help you with this. There's something that was wounded. And again, that's not going to be for everyone, but I wanted to mention it because I saw it in my mind's eye for someone. Let's get some more cards. I feel with this one. Mm, the two of swords. Interesting. Some of you, there's some type of choice. There's some type of choice. I'm here for some of you. It feels more like I want to put it there because should I stay or should I go? And there's something here that I want you to acknowledge. Sometimes if you're in a relationship, the person you're with is going to mirror to you what it is that you might have to give up. And that what I mean by give up, it's not so much sometimes the relationship. Sometimes it is, okay? But sometimes it is they're challenging you with the perception of something that is playing in your field that was part of that womb. Some of you, it could be some, again, trauma response in relationship. Maybe some of you have a, a hard time committing or just sticking through, you know, working through with the third house, the sibling, the, the communication. And I remember saying this about the Mercury retrograde. There's something here that is being highlighted in your communication. And that's something that you could see being revealed in your um, actual relationship, especially romantic. Some of you, you could have a trigger in the romantic uh, relationship or field, some of you, if you're not committed, uh, that's going to show you maybe some, some type of habit that you want to shift. Okay, and let's see what we have here with the Viking energy. Skadi, it's the first time that I ever pulled this card. So you guys, we're going to read this. Look at this. The horns obviously make me think of Taurus, but there could be also Capricorn. Just, you know, we're very earthy here. Let me make sure that you see it. I don't know why I feel like I want to put it there for now while I read this for you guys. Number 34. 34 in the angles of the zodiac do speak of devotion. Oh, this is interesting. Know yourself. It is the most important of life's work. Express, look at this, the voice. Express your independence. Let authenticity be your guide. 
Compromise is part of every relationship, but when compromise pushes you to be someone you are not, a change should be made. There is an easier way to do things. Speak plainly. Speak your truth. There's something here that needs to be spoken. I felt it right away for you. Um, and you see, even this card, which I had never pulled, I didn't have no clue about what it was going to be about, is relating again to this. So that's interesting for you, my dear Earth Moon, because um, I'm feeling how you relate to romance and how maybe some of you shapeshift some of your choices in a relationship is going to be highlighted and it's saying you have to find more empowerment here there's definitely more empowerment that needs to be found okay the scar is sticking out oh <laughs> it came up in the collective reading eight of cups there's something about the way you feel about yourself. So is it a lack of confidence? A lack of like, if I speak up plainly and authentically, the person is going to leave. And I would say with this energy, it's going to require of you to take chances, to make choices. And here I feel it's like, you have to choose you. You have to learn how to choose you in your truth. That doesn't mean necessarily something about the outcome of a relationship, but choosing to honor you and honor your preferences. That's something that I see often coming up in my one-on-one -on -one consultations with empaths. They have a hard time being authentic because they let others and their desires dictate how they're going to go about their life and what happens is that they're 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 almost like feeling that call out or towards different direction or hobbies craft things that call their soul but there's always this kind of wandering back so there is a challenge here and i want to support you here with Knowing that this solar eclipse is going to support you to speak up whatever it is that was hidden. Maybe something that you didn't want to talk about that is creating this tendency. Okay, there's two cards. The five of cups. The five of cups shows that the, the focus on three cups, when two others are presented. Now I feel that for this, there might have been, with the lunar eclipse, there might have been something that started to present itself. You might be receiving certain downloads from the moon, okay? Um, and maybe your, your focus shifted on the past, but probably to resolve a certain pattern of thinking and being. Yes, look at this, the six of wands. Okay, this is interesting. Feeling this, it's almost like I feel someone that feels that they're not able to be successful in love. They're not able to keep love. They're not able to uh, have love in their life the way they want. But I'm, I'm saying to you is that if you're going to always shift yourself and your decision and your authenticity according to the person you're with, you're going to keep attracting people that expect that of you. And that's what needs to change is that you need to be comfortable with what makes you feel empowered and nurtured. Can we have details about that? What makes you feel empowered and nurtured? My moon placements. And it's interesting. I feel I'm, I'm hearing very strongly choice. Choice. I had this reel a long time ago about 
some of the ability of the empath to realize that you choosing your emotions and choosing how you feel is a power. And I feel that there needs to be a shift in the way you use your empathy and your way of reading energy. Oof. Ace of Pentacle. Six of Pentacle. I love this. I love this. What you need to feel nurtured is to find that same give and take. I feel that some of you here with this energy for this solar eclipse in Aries, your feminine is going to be roaring, okay? To show you the way to remove some of the addictive patterns that make you feel unsuccessful in certain aspects of your life. And I would say even some of you could be in a relationship. It could be also in finances. This is something that I had noticed and I share sometimes in consultations that, you know, if you are an overgiver and people pleaser, you'll notice also how uh, your energy and your level of what's left of your own cup, okay, of, of this cup, this cup of love, it's going to manifest also in your bank account. If some of you are watching this and your bank account is in the red, this is a manifestation of your cup being empty. Okay? So I feel recipro reciprocity. And the way to get reciprocity is also first knowing that your request to have a certain give and take is legitimate. Some of you, I just felt called to say that, okay? Legitimacy in your needs, in how you're naturally nurtured. Like recently, I did this fast for this eclipse season. And when I came out of the fast, I realized how I was called to study Ayurvedic medicine and nutrition. And the way my dosha, so my, my way of grounding my energy and thriving with my energy was showing me uh, the patterns of eating and the preferences for foods. I saw that as a child, I had already this instinct, but also that I was being shamed and guilted in expressing certain preferences in just the way that I wanted my food. And as a child, that's one of the basic thing of nurture. So I wanted to share that little story because some of you, you might have experienced something similar where this is like just asking, I used to get so much shit for just asking like, hey, can I don't, can I not have ketchup? Can I not have sauce? And I was actually asking for less because I was highly sensitive. Eating like, uh, my cousin used to eat like chocolate croissant. This used to give me such a, sugar rush that it would give me a headache. I did not like having so much sugar in the morning. I did not like actually even too much candies. I didn't like sugar that much. So some of you, there's something there and you, you can see now you're an adult hearing this story, how there's, there's value, there was wisdom in what you expressed. So let's see what we can do in terms of frequency. The frequency uh, recommendation, when you're working with the moon, you can work with the moon frequency. It helps activate the back of your third eye. So some of the things that you need to illuminate uh, in your consciousness, things you haven't seen that needs to be revealed for this cycle. Okay, and let's see what else for you. My dear earth moon. Yeah, the next one. Oh, okay, that's going to be for the YouTube members. Let's pull another one. I heard two, so let's see. I'll just give it to you after. Ooh, interesting. The liver frequency. Allowing and trusting the light. In Chinese medicine, the liver is kind of called like the seat of the soul. This is where you receive some of the more etheric layers of energy of your soul through this organ. Such an important organ. It's, it's a yin organ. Um, if I'm, let me see, can I remember the time of the liver? I don't have my phone here. Some of you maybe go and study the clock. Uh, I believe, I don't want to say something wrong, but I'm, 
I can't, I can't remember for sure. Deliver time. Go and check out deliver time. I don't know where my phone is. It's hidden somewhere. <laughs> and for the ones that have access to my YouTube membership, the level up for the music, go and listen to Void. There's something here uh, as far as renewal. The mathematical structure of the sound engineering is creating a shell. It creates just like this infinity shell uh, which is very supportive of anyone that's working with the womb and that's trying to find renewal in their creation, renewal in this, this the center of creation. Okay, so the void and the liver frequency. Thank you so much, you guys, for being part of this reading, for allowing me to channel and create space for you. If you need personal guidance, and deepening of this energy at this time that can be a little bit intense, you can get access to all my service here. Thank you so very much. Namaste. You were born with a natal moon in an air placement. Those are your messages for this solar eclipse, a new moon in the sign of Aries. I would suggest watching the fire element because it's also the collective reading energy. It's quite potent. It's just such a new opening for us to have access to a different frequency of being, of thinking, and manifesting. It's interesting how I have a... <laughs> it's kind of a different introduction for everyone. All right, my dear moon in Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. Let's see what we have for you. Okay. There's two cards. We're going to allow that. We have, ooh, interesting. The Eight of Cups in this deck has come twice so far. And look at this. There is this full moon energy. Something at the lunar eclipse, so March 25th, 2024, happened for you. And it's interesting because it's more on the right side for me. I don't know if it's the same side for you when you're watching you guys, but uh, right side, so masculine side here. Um, there's something that you realize that you were maybe thinking with this lunar eclipse activation in the sign of Libra, which was very interesting because this was about the placement of Libra that speak of ritual, that speak of maybe repetition. Some of you almost like, like a, a curse, like a redundance. That was, that actually showed up in the collective reading, showing up a little bit of an energy of a circuit of thinking with Sleeping Beauty and how those eclipses kind of came to short circuit this program. Okay, so I'm feeling it strongly for you. Let's see what else. Nine of Pentacles. Wow. The, the green of her robe is just, just draws me in. Different pastures, different land. You're, it's interesting. Like even with like the, the palm trees, it, different landscape, different experiences, the grapes, the abundance. I feel there's some, some type of quantum leaping here for my air moons that are <clears throat> happening. Oh, this is interesting. My throat has been coming up as a message. Mercury is connected to your throat. <clears throat> and right now in April, as I'm, so this is April 8th, uh, we have this retrograde Mercury, Mercury retrograde, in Aries. Aries is an archetype that helps you uh, ground the play, uh, or set up the playground for your creation. It knows energy boundaries. It has, you know, a potential for gatekeeping, knowledge about gatekeeping, but also about grid working. That means when you set up intentions, when you let yourself feel from your heart and open up the visions, it's going to kind of, imagine like this map, oh, I get chills everywhere, map of light. There's going to be moments and points in time and space that are going to light up the path. And I feel that you're activating some type of potential here some of you may be working with quantum, the quantum field, okay? 
and some of you, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, the quantum field, <laughs> there's something that you used to think that is being highlighted with this eclipse season that you're going to work through and that's going to allow you to experience a total different reality. Okay, that's how I can express it best. All right, let's see some more details about this highlight of way of feeling, thinking, this circuit, this, this, this program. Okay, and there's going to be here. All right. Oh, the page of pentacles and the page of wands, two pages interesting when I said that I thought about a book some of you there might be something about learning your because pages are they're not knights they're not queen and kings they are pages for a reason they are starting their journey and tarot and astrology is a way a gateway to enlightenment so there's something in the field of the fire so fire Okay, connecting you to your heart, to following your heart for action. And here with the pentacle, the earth, there's something about believing in yourself, your worthiness um, and your potential, but also something that is almost like written for you, which is also part of the collective reading. But it's coming up a lot more also for you as uh, an air moon. There's definitely something that is being triggered in your chart that make you maybe here take a turn, take a different turn. Maybe something you did not predict or you did not know about yourself. You didn't allow yourself to think and feel this way. And there's a new path. There's definitely a new path. When I'm saying this, I really am thinking about this um, the reading for air uh, for April 2024. There's just so much of the unknown that is opening up in this month of April. So I would say go and check it out. I think it's somewhere that you'll find in the references of the cards of the timestamps. I'll have those videos connected. I think you have like a little eye here that shows up. Let's look at your feminine. Oh, I love this. Three of Cups and the Queen of Swords. And again, the celebration under the full moon. I, I, some of you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's something you realized. You, there's a certain truth about a certain situation. And for some reason, the, the way of those cups, there's something about an exchange. Maybe there was an unfair situation an unfairness that was prevailing in your life. And that could, that doesn't have to be because of someone that could have been because of something that you used to think about yourself. Maybe I would say with the celebration here and the message about worthiness, um, there was maybe a lack of confidence or a lack of appreciation for who you have become, where you've, the path you've walked and there's an acknowledgement here that is coming up that allows you to venture in a direction unforeseen let's see here if we have something the hanged man this is interesting it's here I feel with the hangman, with this much potential, I feel as some of you, this is happening on subtle layers. You might be watching this now and still feeling a little bit stuck. We're going to work through this stuck, okay, together. Another way that's why I love doing those readings because... It makes me feel like I'm present with you guys for uh, helping you move through those cycles. And even for myself, I always relate to my readings uh, to look at the energy work, the recommendation for the frequencies, because we're, we're activating collectively with this cosmic dance. Oh, wow. I love when the cards just 
just keep on just amazing me. The halls. Didn't I tell you about quantum leaping? I did. And this is why right now it's it's a little bit un, unforeseen because you're in that process. How can we support that process? And those are different quantum doors. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. This this card, I don't see if you, I took the deck and this card stay, which is the bottom of the deck, which is usually the shadow. Let's see that shadow. Hmm. Interesting. The star. The star, the number 17 in the angles of the zodiac, the number I'm talking about, relates to working with synchronicity. Working with your subconscious mind, seeing what your dreams tell you, and see how it manifests in the real world, the 3D world. I feel as some of you, maybe you have to, what is going to unlock you, and what has been maybe um, keeping you in that stuckness. It's because you're in need to receive the next steps, the next guidance through stillness because this activation is coming from beyond. And when you stay in stick stillness, where I was going to say stuckness, but it's almost like the uncomfortable feeling that maybe some of you are trying to distract yourself with because the page can have this energy you know it's being called different directions and here you're seeing and there's many direction for you my air moons okay but stay with what is uncomfortable on appearance the surface level even if it feels very deep some of you i feel this could be deeply seated because you're receiving through this solar eclipse and it started with the lunar eclipse okay it's through this eclipse season some data some download some information for you to open doors that are precious to your soul because that's part of the collective message you're wanting to manifest something that you're at a soul level something that may not even be speakable of you might not be able to articulate yet but it is in the ether it is there okay let's get some more guidance for you this is not gonna be logical i i kept on hearing logic logic this is not gonna feel or appear logical to you at all especially working with the quantum field the ten of swords there's an ending of a certain cycle I think a cycle of repetition. I feel called to invite you to look at your Chiron placement. I have an album called Karmic Astrology with the Chiron Wounded Healer. This is my gift to everyone. I work with gratitude mantras to help you unlock this deep seated wound. When you work with Chiron, there's also a very, very precious gift you become your own guru because that's the power of that wounded healer. It knows then how to heal thyself. And I would suggest looking at your natal Chiron placement and listen and work with this frequency. Mm -hmm. There's some type of ending that needed to happen. We have the sword here. For some reason, I'm like being called to look at the feather. Okay, it's not going to be for everyone, but some of you, there's something about an exchange in words. There might have been some type of, maybe some of you, you were in contract, look, maybe uh, legally married to someone, or there was some legal matters, or there was maybe some of you, it can be as smaller as a text, a letter, an email, something that was exchanged that is connected to a person or connected to a situation that feels like a karmic lesson. And something is ending here. 
Okay, this is interesting. Two cards, one did. Ooh, interesting. Two major arcanas. The Emperor and the Magician. Let me feel this for you. Some of you, I love when I take my time to like sit, sit with this. Some of you, I feel that this situation, this communication, this legal matter, this contract may have made you forget or put aside certain desires. But you see how it's connected here to this this ball of energy this is the jindan this is this is a ball of energy you can work with some of you if you never looked into the jindan j i n d a n that could be something that could be helpful i actually worked just with jindan uh mantras this morning some of you that's a call uh, working with your own source energy maybe that contract was taking a lot of that that source energy fragmented into different direction but there's something here that is calling you back to yourself to your inner power and some of you it's going to be about spiritual magic wisdom is going to be esoteric and some of you is going to just require a shift of perception a shift of perception and you see I feel a call to put it on the feminine side with the nine of pentacles and the shift of perception especially with the nine of pentacles and this ball of energy here that I'm feeling from the emperor and here the vision okay you're going to want to work with energy so when I I'm going to show you some frequencies I already mentioned a couple of things pay attention to those details because those are clues for you to navigate towards the door that is the one that you want at a soul level because you can decide to have another divine detour and other lessons but I feel you're watching this precisely now because you want to opt for the direction that answers this call there's an answer to a call here that is very strong Some of you, I don't know, when I said call, I saw my little, the little emoji with a phone, which I actually use for my one-on-one -on -one consultation. Some of you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation that could be supportive at this time. You'll have the details in the description box. Okay, let's see here, the feminine. This was part of the energy of the collective reading make sure you watch this as well there's something here maybe uh the frequency energy assignment for the fire element is something you need this is about removing uh some of the habits in your quantum fascia in your fascia again here maybe the word quantum some of you if you don't know how to work with quantum let the frequencies help you attune this is why I create what I create because there's nothing that can match the power of sound. There's no words I can express that can give you access to what I feel and what is available to you that I'm not, you know, involved in because obviously it's collective. Look at this, the unknown. I... April reading, collective reading. You'll have some assignment with frequencies. You have the Chiron Wounded Healer. There's something here for you with a lot of major shifts in this quantum. Working with quantum is important. Working with the stars, working with astrology, understanding that you are spiritual. I'm feeling a lot of um, pain here on my nail. Um, I would say for some of you, work with this mudra. I forgot the name of it, but I loved it. To purify your connection to this can be the willpower and the logic. I felt it in the feminine. So probably some feminines watching are being resistant 
in allowing some of the magic to move through them, okay, that can help you. I would say for you, very interesting um, energy that came through me. All right, let's see if there's anything else that can support my air moons for this solar eclipse. New moon in Aries, April 8th, 2024. Two cards, we will take them. Ooh, interesting. The kidney frequency, allowing courage and determination. Some of you, that's what I felt here when I said, you know, like this contract, some of the things that took you a different path. Now there's another one. There's more than one that's calling you, but your soul wants to respond to the call that is meant for you. Uh, and all can be meant for you, okay? There's no wrong choice. But some of you, I can feel this is an urge. There's an urge to feel that you're on, a, on the right path, aka in alignment with your soul's desire. Allowing courage and determination, okay? So that's in the 12 organs playlist. Oh, wow, all the organs. And the triple warmer frequency allowing union and truth. The triple warmer connects to your thyroid. It connects also to the throat, how you speak. This is so interesting. Wow. So some of you working with the organs very strongly if you have a natal air moon. If you do not know how to work or you don't have that much time with the energy work, I would say for you... Uh, play the album. I put the album of the 12 organs in a sequence that allows you to build chi, to build jindan, okay? So that can be something that is easy to access if you're new and a beginner uh, using frequency healing or just new with meditation. If you have any type of questions like this on how to work with my tools, please feel free to email me or if you know my, uh, you know, you contact me on, on Instagram, I always try to check everyone. Sometimes it goes into spam, so that's why I like emails better. Um, but yeah, that's what I have for you, my dear Air Moons. This is your powerfully called to your soul's, you know, direction. There's something in the chart that is being strongly activated. This eclipse season feels very strong for you. Uh, so I'm sending you all my blessings, all my support your way. Namaste. If you were born with a natal moon and a water placement, those messages are for you for the solar eclipse new moon in Aries. So I do invite you to watch the fire element so you can have access to a message that is for the collective. It's such an exciting time where we're opening new doors, portals of energy, of manifestation, uh, so strongly feeling this for you. I am feeling exactly what I was feeling reading for the air, which was a purification or a resistance from the feminine side with the logic. I'm going to show you right away a mudra I used to love when I was uh, purifying some of my energy, but especially the will, the willpower of the thumb, uh, and sometimes with the nails, the logic. You can just put your index on it, and press down and be like this and work with the energy. Now, this is a moon uh, reading. So you do have in the description box a moon frequency. And I would say for you, just using this mudra, listening to the moon frequency can be super, super supportive. Okay, just this, whether you chant or not. All right, let's get some cards for you, my dear water moons. Okay, two cards. I don't know why I feel a third, so I'm going to take it. All right, we have the Five of Cups. You know what? In this deck, I'm going to read this. This deck is a twist. It's the goddess, the intuitive night goddess. And it has a very particular, specific way of 
describing a certain energy. So I want to, I am, there's something here that I need and we're going to get it. <laughs> Maybe it is a need. Interesting. The five of cups is usually depicted as three cups that are pouring out and two that are coming from the divine, from the ether, okay? So it can speak of kind of not noticing some of the blessings that are here. Let's see. Five of Cups spills out in all directions, held together by a blossoming bundle of flowers. This card speaks to the idea, half empty, half full. You may be focusing on loss at the moment, but take time to remind yourself of the things that you do have and ways you may feel yourself up. Loss is hard, but it encourages us to grow and reconnect to our true selves. The journey to refill your cups will lead to a deeper and richer drink. When we let go, we are able to welcome in something new. Don't fight the flow that are at work. Rather, see where they lead. Trying to contain water can be an elusive battle, as it is impossible to get every last drop back. Accept the good and bad as part of a greater whole. Celebrate what remains, and remember you can always rebuild, restore, and replenish. This is not the end. Interesting, in the, in the um, collective reading of the fire element, we do see the feminine energy coming with death, coming with an ending, coming with a transformation, and there is a cord that is cut. So there might be, uh, for you with the solar eclipse, my... Uh, water moons, some type of shift in focus, okay? Instead of focusing of what, on what you don't have, focus on what you have. This is, it feels like the most important statement. <clears throat> okay, it's funny, it's my, it, coughing has been coming up through every, pretty much every sign, uh, every element, because through April, we have this Mercury retrograde in Aries, some of you, if you're not yet members of the Level Up, I have a level for astrology that gives you access to all the planets' transit. I spent this weekend like planning all the transits for the whole 2024. It's just so much fun. So I'm looking forward to the ones that want to align with their soul purpose because this way you can really work with the energies as they come. And here... With Mercury in retrograde, there's a lot of power that wants to be retrieved uh, through the speech, through what it is that is possible for us, okay? So let's see what you have. The Ten of Swords. An ending of a cycle. It was also coming forward for the Moon in Air placement. For you, it feels like you're, you're in that phase where Maybe you're still holding on, my uh, water moon. We're going to move through those energies. If you're watching this and you're seeing things that are a struggle, and that's why you're watching readings, um, just know that through the readings, we're moving those energies. So stick around. Wow, the nine of swords on the other side. Some of you, it's been... It's been really affecting you. How almost like there's there's a, a pull towards a negative momentum. All right, let's shift this. Let's shift this together. Let's get some Viking. Uh, those are great energies to find grid work uh, into shifting energy. I love working with the runes. Let's see if you have a rune. You don't even have a rune. You have money, a card I've never received, but look at this, the full moon. This eclipse season for you, my dear water moon, is really strong. It's trying to help you let go of a momentum of feeling and thinking a certain way that has been making you repeat a certain cycle that the universe wants you to transcend, Okay. Let's see what we have with this card, because I don't know this card. I know the runes much better, but not the cards. 
money. Ooh. Time is precious. Be grateful for each passing minute. Using time well is a virtue. Be mindful of how you use your time, which may mean doing very little if that is of benefit. Now, this is interesting because I'm seeing that some of you, for example, if you have someone on your mind, so it's not going to resonate for everyone, but try to adjust it to your situation. But even if it's maybe your family member, a dispute, a, an argument with your boss, something, there's something that is taking space in your mind and that's literally robbing your energy, robbing you of your time. You're spending time, even if you're saying like, oh, I'm not talking to this person or I quit this job or whatever decision you're making that physically uh, breaks the connection. You're, I'm, what I'm feeling that's happening for this solar eclipse, you're literally having to realize how you might be still telepathically or at a mind level still under the influence of entertaining this quarrel, this, 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 this maybe some of you obsession, um, if it's a person romantically, or there's something as far as making sure you have with the solar eclipse time for yourself, because this is a precious time for you. You're receiving, you see those are spilling out. There's something from the past that you need to surrender and let go of. And especially here with this card, I think this is about spending too much time on others because with this cosmic influence, you're actually receiving certain guidance meant for you. And we're going to deep dive in what it is that you're receiving. But again, can you create the space for those gifts to come forward. So let's see what we're encountering and how we can work through those energies. Wow, 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 okay, all right. The Ten of Swords coming up here when we're working through the energies, there's, wow, there's a new era, a new dawn, an era where you feel worthy, where you feel grounded, where you feel appreciated, where you feel almost, as some of you, I feel that people come to you for counsel. They come to you for uh, advice. And then they leave. And then it, it's, it's like they don't appreciate your time. I feel like some of you, you're giving away your time. Time seems to be of the essence in this reading for my water moon. Because you're, you're highly sensitive to those shifts connected with the water element. You know, the moon is connected to cancer. So if you have a moon in a water placement, you know you're connected to the cycles of the universe in ways that some of you, you're just starting to realize. And it's saying, your time is precious because right now there's some gifts of awareness of how precious I feel some of you it's your counsel your advice your time oh this is interesting I'm feeling now the same little pain that I had on my nail on my on my uh the nail of my big thumb on my foot on the same side so that is connected to the spleen where I'm feeling this in my foot Okay, the spleen is cancer. Some of you being connected to the water with the moon creates a deep connection to being intuitive, but also receptive to the brain waves. Okay, and that means that some of you, you have to make sure that you are uh, clearing yourself, you're creating space for this very subtle gift of connected connection to the universe that is that is always like the moon it, it moves the fastest so 
you're maybe some of you you've been told before that you're moody or you're you're shifting very fast in energies but take it as a gift that it is because that means that you can shift from an energy to another very swiftly as well if you surrender to the water remember that's what the card said a battle against the water water is very elusive you can't win a battle against water it it wants to flow and it will ask you to surrender the page of swords i love this little page look how cute it is there's there's some of you through listening to this message but also through receiving uh, this type of activation through this eclipse season but especially the the whole season because it started with the full moon march 25th uh you're you're there's something new in your mind because you're seeing like here the mind was almost taking over the emotional body the feminine but there's a renewal that is occurring if you let yourself surrender and the six of cups i love this surrender to a state that is very close to childlike and i would say to nurture this go and spend time reading books having hobbies doing things that make you feel good just feeling good is you surrendering and spending more time nurturing i feel this is how you're going to receive this energy my dear um, water moons is through the place of joy especially if some of you have a fifth house placement in your chart I would say even more if you have a water moon in the fifth house, okay? Um, but I feel fifth house energy activation. So maybe in your chart, there's some activation in the fifth house that's occurring. Or maybe the solar eclipse or the lunar eclipse was happening in your fifth house. If you have fifth house in Libra or Aries. And there's something in terms of the, the way you can work energy, my water moons, is, is so easy because feeling joy following joy this is going to make you shift right away from not having or not having enough or not having what you want towards feeling the contentment of having everything feeling fulfilled feeling that everything is possible and i think this is a shift that's very important for you to harness at this time all right let's move towards more messages for oh okay all right there's a connection with something a message towards this time this time mm, look at this the nine of pentacles some of you i have to say it it's not for everyone this is about being single if there's a struggle with being single or maybe some of you this is a time where uh you have to value your singularity i'm hearing the singulars that means what makes you you what makes you precious as a being and you nurturing the hobbies and the things that you like is going to help you have more of nurture the parts of you that are going to be an offering to others especially in terms of work if some of you are like trying to manifest work that is in alignment with your soul do more of what you like and i know that's that it might come also through a phase where you have to do certain things but try to also see how your mindset is affecting you how your relationship towards a certain thing i know that when i was applying for jobs I, I was doing a lot of temp. I love temping. I'm someone that grows a lot through change. It's in my chart. I traveled. I moved more times than my age. Um, but I'm telling you this story because I remember that sometimes I took positions that were not in a field that I expected to like or not like. You know, I went from fashion, which I expected maybe to like, which I did not like. And then I went to banking, which I expected not to like, which I really liked. Uh, 
because it was matching the way that I like to work, my structured ways and, you know. Um, but what was interesting is that I was facing this, but I always had one predicament, which was I brought my energy, my singularity. So I always made sure that I was a joyful person. So the environment was not going to dictate it. The only thing that I was still sensitive to um, was that it was the people I was working with, not for. And that means that I wanted a sense of appreciation and respect. And if it didn't work for me, then I was moving on. But most of the time I was staying in those places more than I expected because I came with the knowing of my sensitivity, my vulnerability, and what it required for me to give my best. And that's what I feel for you. You need it as an illustration for a story. Know what you need to bring your best because people come to you already for this, but you're, you're being depleted of it because you're giving it to others instead of nurturing it. Okay, so let's see if there's something else for you. Okay, let's see what that is. The five of wands, there might be some inner conflict about how you think about situations. And you know what? There was two cards that I put back and now I see why, because we kind of started, started a conversation. Start, maybe some of you, there's an argument that is affecting you right now. The Knight of Cups and the world. I feel that this is what I was saying as far as you may be nurturing certain arguments with yourself because a part of you is trying to show you how to nurture and respect your singularity, your high sensitivity, how maybe you, maybe some of you, you need more time for yourself, okay, than you realize so you can replenish. So that could be knowing thyself is very important for you, my water moons, especially through this eclipse season. And there's a lot of things that are illuminated. I still have a few spots available if you want to benefit from my special equinox. Even if the lunar eclipse has passed, this seems to be still active as a part of a whole for this new cycle to open up. But I love what I'm seeing that is coming as far as this new dawn. There's a, there's a new way for you to relate to yourself where you appreciate yourself. You are noticed. You were already noticed for your singularity, but you needed to, you need to notice first that singularity and what it requires of you to be nurtured and to thrive. So then you can offer it to much more people. Some of you, you will even make um, a career out of it. Uh, some type of humanity in Davier. There's this just a lot that can come through, but it's all stars by you honoring time for yourself with following your joy and watching how you may have in the past focused more on the negative, the things you didn't have, um, and just shift that energy. Let's see if we have some frequencies additionally that can support my water moons for this eclipse. Let's see. Okay. Ooh, the heart frequency. Allowing love and forgiveness. This is in the 12 organ playlist. Some of you, if you don't know how to work with the playlist and you have questions, please feel free to DM me or to send me emails. Sometimes the DMs go into spam. I don't always check it. So usually email is better. Um, the playlist you can play in the order that it is and it will create some chi and renew your prana. So some of you I feel that could be supportive working with the organs of your body, releasing some of those energies at this time. I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light. Namaste. Namaste.